What's up, everyone? Welcome to day two of the Robot Clock Project. This is going to be a epic project when it's finished. And yeah, so yesterday we basically um, just kind of laid out real basic blocks for everything. So this is the robot arm. It's going to be attached to and driven by this servo. This second segment right here is going to be driven by this servo right here. And basically the way it's going to work is it's going to drop marbles or ball bearings into these containers. And each one of these containers is going to have numbers going up the top. And it's going to correspond to the hours here, the tens of the minutes here, and the ones of the minutes here. So every minute it's going to drop a ball into this container. And then every 10 minutes it's going to dump this container out. It's going to drop a ball into this container for the one and then it's going to continue that and then every hour it drops the ball into this container and that's for the hour section so yeah we basically just like got to this point i put it in a frame i'm not sure if i'm going to keep the frame we're all kind of in the process it's all in the process of figuring it out as we go so today my plan is to work on the marble lift or distribution system and so basically what i'm going to do is like do some youtube research and figure out what we think are, are some cool marble lift ideas i'm i want to know what you guys think as well if you guys have any ideas for a cool marble lift please let me know but yeah so basically um let's just get right to it i gotta get you guys a view of the whiteboard here so you know what i'm talking about so just bear with me for one second. I'm gonna get this light turned around. So we've got some light up in here. Boom. I need this tripod right here. And we're gonna get you a nice view of what we're working on here so we can talk marble lifts, which is great. Let's just make sure that our webcam is working. Is this thing on? Yes, it is. Sweet. Cables. Okay. That goes right there. Beautiful. Just zoom out a little bit. There we go. So this right here was the sketch that we drew yesterday. Basically shows what I just mentioned. So we, we kind of have this on, on the screen is kind of like a, I don't know, we'll call it like a, a CAD sketch, you know, it's like a really basic, just like block diagram. And from here, I'm basically just going to like refine it, get it all working. But yeah, let's do some YouTube research first. And we're going to look at some marble lift ideas. And this is kind of how I start many things like this. So let me just pull up a YouTube screen, YouTube, boom. And let's do this. So maybe I'll just search marble lift. And we can turn this off for now. We'll come back to it. Winter Garden. Okay, sure. Um, let's start there. Marble Lift. Winter Garden. Okay, this could be interesting. Oh, we have to watch ads. YouTube Premium. One day I will be able to afford YouTube Premium. <laughs> right now I can't. We're stuck watching. The ads have gotten like crazy long too. Thank you, YouTube. Now I'm gonna be showing an ad within a YouTube video that might even show an ad simpler than this. I wanna be able to do this with a servo motor just because it makes life a little bit easier. Um, I was thinking something along the lines of like a, a, a pump like this for this project. And this would be like running on a servo motor with which would have like some sort of ratchet system so the servo motor will just like flick up it'll like pop a marble up and then like pump back and the reason i like to do it that way is because it, we can almost guarantee that there's always going to be a marble every time it pumps up but this is a cool system here i think i've seen this video in the past already yeah let's get to the let's get to the meat and potatoes here yeah so the marble is drop in and each marble that comes in pops the next marble up i like the way that that looks yeah, see like every single motion pops a marble up. 
Anti V with the puns. Classic Anti V. <clears throat> this is kind of the same idea, I guess, as the, the marble pump that we just looked at. So we would have marbles kind of coming in a line here and then like each rotation of this would pop a marble up. And the fun thing about this is like, it's only gonna take like an hour to design and then like we can basically print out a prototype, which is my favorite part of all of this. I wouldn't be doing this if we couldn't get this into physical real life world. Let's see if there's anything more creative than this. These marble lifts are, eh, nah. What about this? What's going on here? Thanks for not showing ads, YouTube. Appreciate it. That's pretty interesting. That's very interesting. I actually really like that. Wow. This one's contending right now. It's very complex. I love these linkages here. Look at this. It's like one, two, three, four, five, like a six or seven bar linkage. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna put this one in, but we may have to use this in the future. You think I like have a second robot arm to lift? The problem is if we go back to the CAD here, like I'm not gonna have, this isn't gonna be a very precise robot. We're just gonna state that clearly now. It's gonna have one job and it's to grab marbles from like here and then like put them here or here or here. So like, I really don't want to, um, let's make this a little bit wider so we can get the arm back a little bit. Yeah, it does kind of look a little bit like a horse leg. I'm okay with that. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go back to the normal three point faded backdrop, boom, just like that. So, I don't know what the problem is here. There's always, there's always something. Maybe it's this, float, there we go. Now I can fix that again. Fix, boom. So yeah, like this, this robot arm is not gonna be able to go like, ah, maybe, maybe it'll be able to go like down here, but there's still gotta be something that like picks it up. Um, honestly, I just use the same tolerances like all the time. So for like rotation fit, like, hmm. I have an example for you. Do I have an example for you? Where'd it go? Here. So for something like this, where I want like a piece rotating, like look at, look at how well that spins. It's like, it doesn't have too much wiggle. There's still a little bit of wiggle, but not too much. That's 0.4 tolerance. And then like 0.3 is if like I want something to fit, but I don't want it to like, I just want it to be easy for me to fit. 0.2 is like press fit. And then like anything less than that is kind of like less than that, you know? But yeah, like 0.4 is like a very safe for like all my printers tolerance for like rotating objects. And that's often what I use. Like all my pins, all the holes are 9.4 and all the pins are nine. Okay, so yeah, back to YouTube. I think we're gonna just pass on this one for now. Um, yeah, this, this is like the same as the one before. I can't wait to watch this video. I haven't watched it yet. It's in my to watch later list, but I think we're gonna use this kind of lift for this. Yeah, like that That was kind of like the process for me in the first place. And then once I got it, I once I, I found a tolerance that worked, I just stuck with it. And just like, gotta just remember it every single time. But I've done enough of these pieces that it's it's kind of second nature for me at this point. So right now is I'm really making the case for YouTube Premium. Okay, so I wanted to see this lift because this is an interesting idea and it can get pretty pretty large lift capabilities. This is a six minute video. All we wanna see is the result. 
I feel like this is like what it's like when people watch my videos. You skip to the end. Like, just get to it, bud. Is he even gonna show it working? Come on. There's no way he talks about it this whole time and doesn't show it working. Doesn't show it working. All right. Um, let's do the marble pump. The marble pump for this video. And then if, if I decide to change my mind down the road, then we'll, we'll just deal with that. So basically, first and foremost, I guess we need another servo for this because I want to run it off of a servo. And I need the marble pump ring thing. So let's make that first. And I think I'm going to get some music playing. So I'm gonna start with a circle. Amazing, yo, send, send a picture of it in the Discord. Love to see it. Let me know when you do it. I don't know where my phone is, it's gone, but. Oh, come on. That's the worst. So these ball bearings that I'm using are 12.65. So we're gonna make these holes maybe like 13 and a half. And I think I'm going to just like touch that to the edge, just like that, tangentialize that. And we can bring these arms down, boom, that's one, that's two. Okay, so let's give this a dimension, 40, let's go with 30 for now. Oh, that's radius. So one thing that I find annoying is once once you split a circle, you suddenly can't use the dimension, the diameter dimension right away. You have to like put a radius down and change it. We'll go with 40 for that. That might be too small now. Let's just see. We put this like here, make that vertical. Boom, perfect. Black lines are defined. That's what we want. We want defined sketches. And we might pattern that around, but for now, yeah, you know what? This is actually the best way to do is to do that as a feature so we could pattern it if we want it to. So we're gonna make this 13 and a half thick. We're gonna put that sketch in here instead. Boom. That was 13 and a half. That was tangent. Boom. Constrain that vertically. Boom. Draw these straight lines. Grab this outer line, boom. Sometimes I, I find CAD can get super tedious, but it's way better than, I don't know, I guess cutting it out by hand for me. I much prefer this method. So we'll just take this, the tedium. Yeah, they gotta get that, um, get that sorted out, Fusion. R-O. CL marble pump uh, ring. Maybe let's put a hole in it just so we can made it to stuff easily. We'll make the hole like four. And I don't know, we're gonna figure out the mechanism for this after. I'm just trying to get the bare bones once again. Oh, gotta cut that through. Uh, through all through. What's up, German Zapata? Insert components, marble pump ring. There we go. That's gonna be mated somehow to this with some sort of ratchet system. So let's figure out that ratchet system. Might as well do that first. So let's go to the vertical. Yeah, we're good. We're gonna do some sketching. Say goodbye to the original robot sketch. Goodbye. Yeah. 
and my marker is never where it needs to be. I made this like marker holder, functional print. It's only as functional as the guy using it though. Yeah. It normally holds my markers, but they're never there. I need to make a functional print for my brain. All right, so the servo motor moves 180 degrees. The only reason that it's ratcheting is because I want to do it with the servo motor. That way we can control like, like every time it does one servo movement, it ratchet, it like comes back. That's the ratchet part. So I'm just thinking like, if you have a ratchet like this, let's just draw it out like super hack. And then every time the servo moves, it's going to rotate it this way. And it's gonna come back. So the servo needs to have like, how are we gonna do this? Some sort of paw here. Maybe we'll do like a double paw. And then, I don't know, maybe we can even live hinge that. And then this is gonna be attached to the servo horn here. Maybe like this. The servo is gonna be here and this is gonna attach directly to the servo and that's gonna be made. Okay, so we kind of got an idea for how it's gonna go. Hey Neptune, how's it going? Oh, fuck, you guys couldn't see that. There it is right there. Really hack drawing, but at least it makes sense in my head, right? So what we need on the back of this thing is some sort of, I think we're just gonna draw it. This is kind of be my new thing is like patterning features. I never used to do it. I used to always do it in a sketch, but this way we can make changes on the fly. And I think it's actually more optimal from a CAD standpoint. I only like, I only have like a very loose knowledge of what that, that even is. I like had a buddy who took like optimizing for CAD class like back like 15 years ago when like it, it actually really mattered. Now computers are just so fast, it doesn't matter. But okay, so this is gonna be this way and we I want it to rotate this way. So I think my paws, oh my God. Uh, what, what exactly do you mean Hussein, Hussein Ab one by HD? Let's just draw it, and if, if I get it wrong, we'll just flip it. It's not a big deal. Gonna give it random dimensions, doesn't really matter what they are. And then we can oh need to uh, grab that, trim it, boom. And now we're gonna just go up the surface just like that. And then we can circular pattern to that. Well listen, ATV. I got nothing for you. All right, cool. Got our ratchet system. Maybe before I circular pattern it, I'm going to give this a little fillet. Very little fillet. Also known as a fillet. Okay, boom. So that's good enough for now. So now let's just make sure this is right. So classic mistake, did it the wrong way. Cause I wanted to go this. Ah, why don't I use Autodesk Inventor? 
Well, I guess because I'm a SolidWorks guy. There's no good reason. They're all kind of the same at the end of the day. They all do the same thing. But I made these ratchet paws the wrong way. Classic move. So let's flip it. All I really have to do is this. Peace to you. We're just going to redraw this. Boom. Tangent, boom. Grab this edge, boom. Trim that, boom. Give us a dimension of what, whatever it was. Maybe it was 15, I can't remember. And that should solve the problem. Of course not. Missing edge, boom. Okay, cool. So now we need our like ratchet paw thing, the jig. Um, We're just kind of making things up as we go here. So I'm gonna start with this outer ring here. And honestly, guys, this might not be the best way to do things, but it's a way to do things. And sometimes that is better than anything else. So we're gonna give this a random dimension for now, once again. 2.5 I like for the thickness and I think it was like five mil and then we can put a crossbar on here I'm gonna do it on the front plane So I use the front plane now for like everything I draw because when I save it as an STL and drop it into my slicer That drops with the, the bed with it like on the right orientation on the bed and just saves me a step down the line So yeah, if you're wondering why that's why laziness so this, I'm just gonna make a crossbar. This is gonna be the midpoint, uh, midpoint, boom. And we can just give this like a random orientation like that. And we can extrude that now. And that I'm gonna extrude as a thin feature, give it a mid, mid plane function of, I don't know, maybe we'll go five. We're gonna go the other way and we're gonna go like two and a half, boom. And that might be like not thick enough. Actually, yeah, it's not thick enough. This needs to be like seven. So that way it's going to mesh. I'll show you guys where it's gonna mesh, but. R-O-C-L, R-O-C-L, underscore, Paul, servo, attachment. Really great descriptions here. So this is gonna go, Paul, servo, attachment, on this servo right here. And this is going to somehow connect to this and we'll figure out those details down the road. For now, let's just get it all like kind of mapped out. Boom. And then this is going to mesh in there. And we'll just mesh them together for now because then we can make the pause. So mesh that to that, boom. And then we can hide this and we can go to work on these paws, boom. Cool. So we're gonna edit this part right here. So first and foremost, I'm going to probably bring this in a little bit. Actually, what I'm gonna do first and foremost is make this a little bit bigger. So one thing to keep in mind is the bigger it gets, the more torque is gonna to be required to push the marbles up. But yeah, it's fine. It's fine for now. These are gonna be, this is a strong motor. So it's really as long as the, the ratchet paws hold up and everything should be fine. Okay, so let's edit this part now and we're gonna put some ratchet paws on this thing. And we'll sketch on the front plane. So basically I just need like a, I'm gonna do like, kind of like a living hinge kind of thing. And I need it to like basically like mesh into here. So I'm just gonna like draw it maybe like this. Hmm. So when it's meshed, I want it to be like here. I want it to be up against there. I'm kind of making things up as I go right now, guys. So if you have a better way to do this, let me know.
But my thought process is if I do it like this, and I may just be better off using springs here, but. Something like along the lines of this. So as it rotates, let's just, let's just test our theory here. As it rotates, that's going to like bend this way and then it's gonna snap into this side here. I don't, I don't like it. I don't know if I can trust it. I think we're better off using springs. In which case, In which case, this is gonna be its own part. So let's do that first. So I think I'm gonna make this like seven millimeters cause I think that's the, the smallest shaft that I like to go with here. And we'll just extrude the, sh no, let's extrude the, the poly first and we'll get the shaft, oops, boom. So it's gonna look something like this. This is gonna be a curved edge, very small. Let's make that straight line. Let's make that tangent. Let's give us a radius of 0.25. A ball bearing detent. Let's see what a ball bearing detent is. I think if this is what you mean, it would work, but I think it would take the same amount of parts for me. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It might work. It probably would work. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll design this first and then we can see if we can modify it in a different way, but like I, I always say, like just getting it done is better than thinking about it too much. So often that's why I'll make certain decisions. We didn't need that. What's the problem here? Ah, this needs to be tangent, boom. We trim that away and then we can extrude it and we'll extrude it maybe five mil. Then we're gonna give it a shaft. And actually what I would like to do is make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make that eight, boom. Seven, let's screw that shaft out. I think two and a half is the, the key number here, just for now. And then we're gonna give this, this needs to have a way to like hold the string, the spring. Yeah, like I, I don't honestly know if I always agree with simplest, easiest, but um, in a case like this, it's really just like getting it done is the most important thing. And yeah, cost is not a factor. Maybe it will be if this becomes like a, a real product, but for now, we're just trying to get a fast prototype made. That's kind of what my goal is. So yeah, let's just keep going under those CL. We're just gonna call this a Paul. And then this, I want to do this to it. Actually, we're just going to use this sketch here. Boom. Exactly. Like I often will, will go way too complex just for the sake of the way I like the way it looks, but in this case, this is just like a small part and there's there's just no need for me to go too complex on this. So there's my 7.4 millimeter hole. I'm gonna have to make this wheel way bigger. And I think that this whole concept is gonna have to change, but for now we're just gonna go with it. Let's 
So let's just get this constrained in space. Boom, vertical, boom. Make this maybe like, boom. 1.6 is good for that dimension. Extrude it, 2.5, make sure we're going the right way. Yeah, we are. We're gonna extend this out. Like, might even need more than that. And then when we come back here, we can now take our Paul, which is not gonna fit in there now that I think about it, but it's good enough for now. Just to get an idea of what we're trying to do here. This is gonna go into this hole. Let's grab these two pieces, get them mated. That's true too, but I think, um, yeah. I don't know, that's the best way to learn, isn't it? So that's gonna go like that, and there's basically gonna be a spring coming from here to here. And that would spring load that down, but it would still allow it to come over here, push this way, and then it will pop down there. Okay, cool. So that's good for that. Um, I, I thought about doing a 3D printed spring, but I want this to like work forever. And I want to print it out of PLA and PLA kind of loses its springiness after a while. So we're probably gonna use real springs here. This this whole piece doesn't have to be 3D printed. That that constraint is lifted here, which is great. Okay, so the next thing we gotta figure out is how to get this to work. So I think that this this ratchet system is gonna have to change 100%, but it's, it's something I'm gonna have to think about offline, I think, because it's a little bit complicated to figure out under pressure here. But this system right here, it's gotta come up and there's gotta be something that like pulls the marble out and feeds it into like whatever it's feeding it into. And also what I'd like to do is move this down. So we're gonna float that, boom. I want this to be like down here. And so I think that the marble thing, we can actually get like complex with the way the marbles come up. Like they can go like this and create this cool shape and like pop out the top here. And I think that's maybe what we're gonna do. So maybe let's, um, if it goes like this and this and then like this and up. So they're gonna come in through here. It's gonna pick them up and they're just gonna get distributed. Maybe I'll just go like, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna actually turn these paws around and just go like one, two, and up. That could be cool. So let's make that, hmm. Or I can just go like this and up. That might be better. So there's less weight that the servo is moving. Like this, we're, we want the marbles to get picked up like somewhere over here. They're gonna get dropped down here somewhere. Hmm. This is that moment in all CAD designs where you just end up staring at the screen for a while. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all part of the process here. Okay, let's, let's just draw something and we'll figure it out from there. So I'm gonna draw the path that I want the marbles to, to go through. Maybe they're gonna go like this. 
and then like this, and then like this, and then straight line up to finish it. Maybe we'll have like one in a buffer here. 12 point, what is it? 12.65, it's our buffer marble. Do we want it to pop out and like, how do we get it to pop up? That's the question. So it's like, what I'm thinking about right now is like, um, if we have the gripper come down and grip onto a marble like this, for example, it has to be able to grip cleanly like one single marble. So I'm wondering now if this is actually like the wrong method, unless it comes up and then like this way and drops into like a little ramp here. That might be the move actually. It'll come up, drop it into the ramp and the ramp is gonna be facing, I know I'm just talking nonsense. Okay, let's just draw it. So the ramp is gonna, it's gonna come up like that. It's gonna drop it onto a ramp here and then this is where it's gonna be picked up from, like right here. So how do we do this? Yeah, yeah, exactly, a cradle. That's gonna be able to scoop the marble. That's, that's what you mean, right? So how do I do this? Maybe I'll like, this will be one piece. This will be a second piece. Um, yeah, I saw what you sent. I haven't had a chance to watch the video yet, but I know you were talking about um, magnets. Magnets could be cool. It might be a very compact way to do it. So there, you have something there. You have an idea there that I will look into, but that's, I guess, independent of what this is right here, right? Because this is what, what the thing is gonna grab out of. An ice cream scooping robot, eh? It's a good time. So I need to make a piece for this. I still don't really know how I'm gonna mount everything. Like, I don't know if it's, if it's gonna be like platform mounted, which could look really cool and like kind of be like a desktop piece that maybe you can also put on the wall if you wanted. And maybe like have a base and everything's mounted to the base and like it could sit flush against the wall on a desk or you can like I don't, or you have two versions, like you have one wall mounted version. Hmm. All right, let's just draw, figure out later. So I think what I'm gonna do for this is, I'm just gonna turn this into a block first. Let's get rid of this. Oh man, you guys can't be talking about ice cream right now. That's, that's crazy talk. Cause I want some ice cream now. What's my favorite snack? Pizza, does that count? Pizza's a meal, but it's also a snack. And definitely it's pizza, unquestionably pizza. Oh man. For me, pizza nights are always th Friday nights. Pizza night is, is classic Friday pizza night. What's your problem?
So I don't really have a solid game plan for this, but I'm just going to make this shape, extrude it as a block and then cut like a groove in it for marbles. And then I'm gonna make a secondary one over here. Actually, I'm gonna do that now. You're gonna have to draw me a sketch, Neptune, and then share it in the Discord. Oh man, you guys are making me so hungry right now. I wish I could say that I like literally just ate and now I'm hungry again. All right, sweet. Now I want to do this. Take all of these lines, offset them. Don't want this, don't want this. We're gonna offset it like eight maybe, boom. And then we basically just gotta like offset all of this. Like chain, another 10. Oh, eight's probably fine, actually, realistically. That goes there. That goes there. We're gonna change this to, you know what? I did this wrong. I'm gonna delete this. Delete this, yes, yes. Learning as we go. Reverse dot, boom, like that. And then we can give these dimensions again, 3.5, boom. This needs a dimension. 10 works for me. This needs a height. 30 is perfect. And then we can do this. And then now we can extrude this and we're gonna extrude it like 15. And then now here on this plane, we're gonna sketch our marble hole. Mid plane that shit. This is gonna be, I don't know, 13.25 maybe. I want that to be like right here. Perfect. So now, I guess I can just, hmm. On this, I'm gonna get a sketch. So these are separated by eight millimeters, I believe, yeah. So if I just do a sketch like this, take all of these pieces, oops. And go four, make that offset geometry, construction geometry, boom. I can use that sketch. Show. So we're gonna take this sketch, we're gonna create a swept cut. That's the profile. What's your problem? All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a, oh, that's what the problem is, okay. First we need it before we do that, we need to create a plane there. 
airlock. Boom. And we're gonna sketch on this plane. We're gonna grab basically this line, select chain. There we go. Now we can hide this. Now we're making a swept cut with this. And this is our path. And sweep operation failed. Why? I don't know why. Might be this radius is too small. Let's see. Swept cut. There we go. So now we have a channel for our marbles. R O C L. Upper channel. Insert components, ROCL, upper, upper channel, boom. So now we can make adjustments to the dimensions. So this I wanna be like 65 maybe, even more, 85, 80. So this is basically gonna like distribute the marbles up into this channel somehow. Not really sure how quite yet. But it's gonna eventually work. I have faith. It's gonna push the marbles into this channel. It's gonna pop them up here. And we're gonna have a ramp here. So let's put the ramp in now. Set this eight, perfect. And this is where the ramp is gonna be here. So now we need to offset all this stuff. horizontal perfect and now we can find a good angle for this to think maybe like maybe like five degrees from flat it's probably good so like ideally I only want one marble coming out of here at a time. So this I'm actually going to round like that. This needs to be constrained somehow. We're just gonna give it a height. It's good enough for now. Okay. And trim this stuff, boom, boom. Go away, dot. And then now we just gotta get some constraints to this side here. Wow, weird, what was that?
This needs a constraint. Uh, we'll just constraint it here. Beautiful. This needs a constraint. No, that one we want to be the diameter of the ball, 12.65. And we can give this a constraint. Nope, doesn't like that. What's the problem? Oh, it's just this that needs a constraint now. The length of this. Okay, so now we can grab this. We need this, this. And offset those four. Reverse, and those are also construction. Check. It's got an open contour here, which means just something's just not closed. Yeah, I should solve it. And then just merge them. No. Um, I'm actually, yeah, I am. I'm looking at the Oculus Quest. So I'm hoping there's a good deal for that. Not sure. I honestly, I might just buy it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I want to, I just want to understand a little bit more about the VR world. It's like one of those things that like makes me nervous and I figured if you can't beat them, just join them. What about you? Beautiful. Look at that. Okay. Now I can adjust this. Cool. And then I guess what I can do here, make an axis there like that. Sketch, get that. You wouldn't recommend the, but like what other options are there really even if it's not Oculus? Revolve cut on that axis. Boom. So, the game plan for this is to have the marbles get fed up through here. And every time a new marble is added in, it's going to push the next one up. It's going to drop it. Like once they get pushed up over this hump, it's going to push it into here. And there's going to be a marble sitting right here that this bad boy is going to come and grab. And it might grab it or we might use some sort of Magnet mechanism a la Ivan Miranda, as per Neptune's suggestion. Which could be really nice because I hate the way this looks right, right now. What What is a normal laser printer? Oh, like a, oh, a laser printer, like an actual like words on paper printer. Not like a, a Glowforge. Valve index. Does that require like a computer to run? Because I, I don't really have space for that. That was the only reason why I was looking at the Oculus. Like I don't really care that much about graphics. Yeah. See that that's the problem. Like I don't have like space for a computer. I also can't afford a gaming computer either. Which laser cutter do you have? I feel like we've talked about this. You just got one, right? So I'm just gonna try to draw a circle here that corresponds to the marble circle lift thing. Yeah, true. Oh, okay, well, then we're gonna say a la Neptune's creations. 
Yeah, please do. Although I think like if I bought a if I bought a laser machine, a laser cutter, it's probably gonna be like a fully like I don't know, a closed source one. I was looking at the Glowforge. I know it's overpriced, but it works. It gets the job done. I used it quite a bit at my last job. And like, I really don't like messing around with my equipment. I just want it to work. But yeah, please do, please post. I'm just trying to like find a way to Give me this, I just need this corner. There we go. Can make that coincident. Then we can grab this line. Trim, oh shoot. Grab this line. Now I can trim this, boom. Uh, nope, need to trim this too. Okay, cool. Beautiful, thank you. I'll check it out after the stream. So this is gonna line up perfectly with this. Concentrically. And somehow, I'm not sure how, so don't ask me yet, because I don't know. I think what's gonna have to happen is this is gonna have to come around here. Yeah, I honestly, I literally have no room for anything else in here, like, you haven't really seen the way this is laid out, but gonna make it work. Oh, do we have a troll by the name of Corey Pollock in the chat right now? What's up, Corey? Everyone say hi, Corey. This is my cousin. We have the same grandmother, so we have the same uh, sense of grandma humor, I guess. It is cold outside. You're not wrong about that. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what the thought process is here, and I think this is wrong. Like, if this is the track, it comes around. Let's just, let's build out the track. I would say it's like close enough to winter at this point. What I want to do is take that and I need to like wrap that around. So let's make a sketch. I want to go off the middle. I don't know the best way to do this. Yeah, definitely. Although Texas is, um, they don't, they don't love Canadians in the States. It's not easy to just move there. I would love to. There's a lot of places in the States I would love to move, but it, they don't make it easy. So I want to rock this around here and then I'm going to have the, the wheel kind of sit in that pocket and that's going to push up the marbles. So how do we get that wrapped? I think I can just draw on this. I'm going to grab this face as an intersection curve. Beautiful. Make that a construction geometry piece, and we can just build an arc off of that, just like that. Boom. And we can give our ramp in, just like that. Sweet. Let's give it a dimension. And I think five degrees is probably good. That's five. We need five degrees. We need an angle here. And then we can give this a, I'm going to give it a diameter. Display is diameter. And I don't know what we're going to give it like 70. Maybe we'll, we'll worry about that later. And this, we can also worry about this later as well. But now we can do this. We can grab this face and we can create a swept boss base. 
and there is our piece right there. Beautiful. Love it. So now this, instead of being attached to this right here, is going to be concentric with the piece we just made. Cool. And we can make that a little bit bigger, I guess. And I believe we can make this even smaller actually, but okay, let's just hold this in place and kind of like do a little logic check here. But the idea is the marble is gonna roll, where's our marble? Let's grab a marble. This guy, we can take that, made it to a ramp. This has the wrong name now. Started as upper channel, now it's full ramp. That's gonna be legacy. Boom, and then we can constrain this to this for now. Boom, and then we can mate this to this face. Tangent. We might need to change that actually because, it, yeah, that's not the way to do it. But we also need to constrain this. So where's our vertical plane? Just like that. We'll constrain that to this for now. Fuck it. Okay, so that shouldn't move now. Beautiful. Now we can move this over a little bit. So like one thing that I go for when I design this stuff is I just want it to look interesting. And I'd say this looks pretty interesting. So now we gotta figure out how to get this to travel on the, on the face. This isn't the right mate here. Let's see what mates we have that we can use here. So, mechanical mates. Could be a cam, cam path. Nope, needs to be a closed loop. Path mate. Hmm. The path mate might be the right mate. So let me just show, I'm gonna create a path just to see. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be turning with, it's, it's, it's not, it's gonna be ratcheting because I don't, I want to be able to like control it easily without feedback. Cause I think like if we don't have to put like a feedback switch to say that there's a marble there or something, um, I think that's why I want to use like a, a servo that's ratcheted. Cause like, you know, every time it ratchets down and goes back up, it's going to be producing another marble. A Geneva mechanism would be cool. But yeah, in this case there, it, there would have to be some sort of like feedback loop telling you that once a marble comes up here and like it's fed up to here, it needs to stop like turning. Unless there's a better way to do it, but yeah, so, you know, anyways, for now, I'm just going to go with this and then we can figure that out down the road. Yeah. Thanks though, Neptune. Honestly, everyone out there, like Neptune has the best ideas. He's got so many ideas. It's so helpful. Okay. So let's just, uh, let's just make a path to follow just, just for the sake of testing right now. So I'm going to do a sketch here and I need all of these faces. Boom. Boom. No, I don't want that line. I want that face, that face, that face, that face. That one, that one, and that one. And we're gonna just do intersection curve, boom. I don't know if this is actually gonna work, but we'll see. So now we go here and we can maybe, I've actually never used this path mate before, but path selection is gonna be this. And component vertex. What does that mean? Does that mean that I need a 
point. Okay. One last thing to put in here, I guess, is I need a component vertex. And now I'm just gonna grab, make a point here. Good enough. Okay, let's try it again. There needs to be like a marble path, a marble mate. Component vertex, selection manager, grab this path. Nope, that did not work. Okay, cool. That's actually working. So like one thing is I need to like orient it. Maybe I need to grab that. And I need to mate that with this. Yeah, cool. There we go. So now this should be able to travel all the way up and follow this path like that. And it's just gonna give me a better idea here, at least what's gonna happen. Like, let's see, let's see if we can even. So if that comes in there. Okay, this might break SolidWorks because sometimes it does, but it's worth a try. Move component, physical dynamics between these components, this one and this one. Resume drag, okay, here goes the money. Cool. So one thing is I need to figure out how to constrain this to this face. And then we can figure out exactly how that works. So let's try. Maybe I can like have an idea. Edit part, no, not edit sketch. Edit part, oh, it's already edited, okay. So we need this. And if I can maybe just do like a, intersection curve of this face. Time machine prop, that'd be dope. I'd be interested in seeing that. Boom. And maybe we can like, I wanna grab the line, I wanna grab the whole sketch. Can I sketch that and that? Tangent? Maybe it can be coincident. Doesn't like that. Oh man, this is a challenge. How do you do this? Okay. I know how to do it, figured it out. It's kind of a backwards way to do it, but it's just the way SolidWorks is, I think. Okay, I actually don't wanna delete that. I want that path. I'm gonna create a new sketch, or a new line at least, and we're gonna go select chain, boom, offset that chain, and we're gonna offset it the width of half of a marble. And yeah, that's good. I think we're gonna select this. We're gonna make this construction geometry. Might as well, both of them. Okay. And then instead of, what I need is this. On this marble, this path mate, we're gonna change it to the center of the marble. That we need to keep. Let's just change this, boom. Edit sketch. We just need this here. And then we can... Get rid of that, boom. Okay, cool. So 
So now we can make a path mate between this component vertex and selection manager, this path. which unfortunately needs to be not construction geometry. Easy fix, boom. So yeah, like as long as I, I've been using SolidWorks for a very long time, like 12 years, 15, even maybe even 15 years. I don't know. Yeah, we'll call it 12 years. We'll call it 13, 13 and a half years because we don't like 13. But yeah. Um, I'm still learning how to do things, which is it's fun. This is fun. Cause like sometimes you, you don't really learn things until the, the need to learn it comes up, right? Boom. Check, boom, sweet. Okay, so now this marble will only follow this path and that is how you do it. So it's just vaguely what's gonna happen, but so this allows us now to figure out how this section is gonna work. So the marble is gonna come in and it's gonna be pushed up against this wall right here. And then this is gonna come around and I guess what's gonna happen is hopefully the weight of the marble is back here. The other ball bearing is gonna push this in. Let's put another, let's just put another one on. So I guess we actually don't even need to constrain the middle. Okay, so uh, path mate, component vertex, boom. Selection manager, this line, boom, boom. Okay, so this is gonna come in. This is gonna be pushing this marble forward. And when this comes down, this is gonna push into here. Like that. And that's gonna go there, and that's gonna keep moving forward, and then eventually it's gonna get to a point where it stops. And that's gonna be stuck there, but this is gonna keep moving forward. So now we can do this. Let's save everything in case we lose it. Move component, physical dynamics between these guy, this guy and this guy. Resume drag, and let's see. So what I, I don't really know what's gonna happen is when it comes up here, how is it gonna exit this piece right here? Uh, if, if it jams on the top of the marble, we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. But yeah, so this right here is the only thing that I need to figure out. So I guess what I'm gonna do probably is I'm gonna have this piece is not gonna be the thickness of the marble. It's gonna be thinner. And then this right here is gonna come on either side of it and that's gonna allow the marble to come out. So let's make those changes now. Cause this doesn't need to be the thickness of the marble because the track is gonna constrain the motion. So we're gonna make this, I don't know, seven. That's nice. Let's make sure it's all in the right place now still. It's not, because I constrain these faces. So I actually need to constrain. It's this guy. There's a couple ways I can do this. I think for the sake of ease, I like to constrain normally um, planes. So let's just make a plane and we can constrain the planes easier. Because I built this off of that. This is the best way to do it. I'm just gonna do this, turn this into a mid plane, boom. Problem solved. Now we can grab this, grab this plane, yeah. And then we're gonna constrain it to, I think it's plane one on this piece. Where is it? Yeah, plane one. So now this piece is gonna sit in the middle exactly of this piece right here. And then we can make an adjustment here So instead of this being cut like that, what I'm gonna do is bring it down and I'm gonna just like maybe cut on this 
flame on this face right here. So I made the disc seven mil. I'm gonna give some clearance. I'm gonna make this like 7.75 because like, you know, if, if you can afford the clearance, take, take all you can get really. That's my mentality here. Boom, grab that. That's the mid plane point for that. And then we're just gonna give it some sort of vertical dimension. 20 sounds good. And we're gonna cut up to next. So let's see what that looks like for now. Perfect. So the thought process here is the marble is gonna come up through here and it's gonna move, move, move. And once it gets to like here, that's gonna push it up. I, I just gotta make sure that this, this clears it. Yeah, it looks like it will. And then that's gonna basically sit here. And then the next marble is gonna come in and this is gonna come around, whatever, like it might, there might be two, two of these slots in there. And then when this one comes up and around, let's just see what happens. If we do this, we're gonna do a save it so we don't freeze anything, move components, physical dynamics between Let's see, if we do it between this component, this component, this component, and this component, let's see what happens. It might, yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, let's take out this channel. Move components, physical dynamics between these components, resume drag. So let's just see what happens. That's gonna push up like that, and boom, that's where it stops. Cool. That is fucking awesome. And then basically like what's gonna happen is all these marbles are gonna keep coming in. And like, I guess the first one's gonna roll down here and like probably end up here, but like there's always gonna be enough marbles in here to keep this marble pushed up. And then every time a marble, a new marble comes in, another marble is gonna get pushed out and hopefully drop down this ramp and sit right here. At which point, the robot arm is gonna come down and maybe with a magnet, it's gonna grab this, bring it up and over these and then drop it. If we can get this to work with a magnet, some sort of like electromagnet, that would be pretty clutch. Cause then you can have like a really compact, this is called an end effector, a really compact end effector. Another way we can do it is to just orient this, this way maybe. Like, I really want to avoid having an actuator here if I don't need it. True, yes, yes. That's a really, really simple way to do it. We don't need an electromagnet. Love it. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do, actually. I think that's the way to do it. Let's see if we can prototype that really quickly. Hmm. Let's go to the drawing board here. So how can we make a nice compact electro, not electromagnet, a mechanical magnet mover? So if we have a magnet, like, I don't know, like right here, this shape magnet, can you guys see what I'm drawing? Yes. And it's gonna be like in some sort of like cylinder, at least I picture it right now. And then in the low position, the magnet's gonna be down here. And when it's in the low position, it's gonna be able to hold the marble. But when it's in the high position, it's gonna drop the marble and the marble is gonna fall. So what we need is a way to move the magnet up and down, and we're gonna use a servo motor because it makes it really easy to control. So let's just put a little servo motor here. 
And I think the simplest way to do it is to have something like this coming out of the magnet. I have a link going to the servo arm. And the servo arm is going to be here. So when we're drawing it side by side, can you see that? Yeah. The servo arm is going to go down, let's just say to here. Let's keep this all the same dimension. Here's the magnet, it's low position. Here's the thing coming out of the magnet and the arm. So when it moves up, it pulls the magnet up, that drops the marble. When it moves down, it puts the magnet here. And let's just see how much space we need to have between a magnet and a marble. I believe I have a magnet kicking around here. I do, so convenient. This is probably a bigger magnet than what we need, but for the sake of testing, because these are steel ball bearings, it's just gonna grab it like that. And then it's gonna pull it up. Let's just see. So it needs to be like that. Oh, there's actually two magnets here. It's very powerful, more powerful than we need. A double symmetrical joint. What do you mean by double symmetrical joint? Fuck, marbles on the desk are dangerous. Um, you know. Are you talking about like a four bar linkage? Let's play guess what Ah, that's another way to do it for sure, actually. A magnet with a hole. So, okay, so let, let's play a guess what everyone is, everyone's design thinking. I lost my, didn't lose my markers. Okay, so um, Neptune is thinking something like this. This is what I'm, I'm interpreting. Tell me if I'm, if I'm right or wrong. So we have a hole. And the magnet would be like attached. And then instead of having the magnet moving up and down, we can just have a rod going through the hole and it will push the ball off the magnet. Is that right? I like that because that's a really simple way to do it. This thing holding the magnet can like also be the thing that mounts, the servo can mount onto that. Let's just do it like this for now. Can you see what I'm drawing? Yes. So the servo would mount in here, and then this would just be like basically, there's a couple ways we could do it actually. Um, we can do it on, on a cam system. So this rod could be on like a spring here. And then it can just be a simple cam. Something like that. And as the cam comes around, it pushes the rod down, and then the cam comes back up and it pulls the rod back up. So I like that idea. Neptune coming in hot. Um, oh, okay, you're thinking like, like, sort of like, like this you mean? Is that what you mean there, ATV? Okay. The challenge of this though is this rod needs to, this needs to come down like that and this needs to come down like that. But honestly, I think right now, Neptune for the win again, like, like honestly, Neptune's like gonna be like, dude, you, you just like, you saved the day so many times. Yeah, so I just need a, a magnet with a hole in it, which is easy enough to source. Fuck it, let's just buy one now. From the big bad Amazon. Magnet with hole. Let's <laughs> see what we get. Uh, oh, you know what? I actually already might have one. Magnet with hole in it. The only thing that I'm concerned with with the magnet with the hole is is the ball bearing going to end up dead in the center of the magnet? Yeah, like this, right?
Hmm. How big is the hole? Three millimeter hole. Really? So you can't, you can't buy stuff from Amazon in Belgium, eh? That's brutal. I wanted a bigger hole because I want to, I want to use plastic if I can. I guess I could use like brass to push it out. That could be really, really nice actually. I feel like they should both be magnetized, right? Let me see if I have, I might have a magnet with a hole in it. I'm going to have to take like a, a second, 30 seconds to look for it. Cha-ching! Amazing. This is back when I was working um, at the toy company. So let's just see what happens. These are really strong magnets, but. Okay, yeah, look at that. The ball lands perfectly in the hole. And then, I don't know, what can we use here that's not magnetic to pop it out? Questions will always end up in the hole. Let's just see. How do I test this? Looks like it does. That is so clutch. I don't even have to buy one. Honestly, this gripper was like kind of stressing me out a little bit because I really didn't like what I had. And this is a huge game changer. And like, especially because if this doesn't work, then we have these options as well, which is great. So brass, I have some brass rod, which could look really nice. Not very cost effective. You could probably get away with a 3D printed part, but this is a pretty small hole. And yes, I agree. That's also true. Yes. And I guess even the PLA ring can also um, have like a contour in it to make sure that it gets into the center as well. What's up, Max? How's it going? So right now we're just discussing how to grab marbles with this robotic arm. And we've come to the conclusion that magnets are the best way to go. So that's dope. That's a huge, huge move. Oh my God, move forward. Okay, so let's design actually, and maybe this is what we're gonna print tonight is to test this concept. So I wanna use, I wanna use a cam system. I wanna use one of these, Sh should be enough. We can tune it with, with, I hope she doesn't use a magnet, Mr. Neptune. Sicko. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna build right off of this for now. So. Hmm. How do I do this? So this is going back to asking about clearances. This is one of those clearance issues where I change my mind always, but I'm gonna give it a clearance of 0 0.3 cause I want it to be like, be able to slide on without any problems. And then which way do I want it to go down? Maybe this way? So if, if I'm doing this with a magnet, I need it to have like a lip like that on the, okay, we got this. So we're seeing our top piece, boom, bottom piece.
There's gonna be something that this slides in here, maybe something that the okay. All right, all right. I don't know how big we need this to be, but we're gonna make it like, I don't know, maybe five mil thick. And this is actually something that I, I forget every single time, but I didn't forget this time. Where are my little motors at? They have this wire coming out of them and I literally forget to make a hole for that wire every time and end up having to Dremel a hole for it. So we're gonna make a hole for it this time. I'm actually really happy that I didn't fuck that up again. I don't know exactly how big I need it to be and I'm kind of being lazy by not measuring, but it is what it is. It should, it should fit in that hole. Cool, and then here's where our ma magnet's gonna go. This is gonna be a challenge to measure. Just, just so you guys can see what I'm doing better. I'll move that over. Boom. So I'm trying to measure the magnet without, I guess it's fine. Okay, so the magnet is 24.75. 24.75, so I'm gonna make, this is, another, this is actually another one of those clearance issues. I'm gonna make this, Hmm. I actually think I want this to come out of this side. We'll, we'll figure that out after. But I'm gonna make this, it's 24.75. I'm gonna go 24.75 plus 0.2. And like, if it's too big, I'll just glue it into place. And then the hole in the center of the magnet thing. Oh, first we need an outer lip, boom. 2.5 is a good wall thickness for right now. I'm actually thinking, I, I wanna press the magnet in this way. Cause that way we can have the, the PLA. Oh, you know what though? Yeah, no, it's not very strong in that direction. Okay, I'm gonna push now I gotta figure out how I wanna print this thing. Hmm. Okay, well, while my subconscious is working on that, let's just fix this. We're gonna put this on the top here. Boom. We're gonna go out up to that surface, 6.5, 7, 7.5, perfect. And then we don't need this anymore because this is gonna press onto the top. I'm gonna to probably screw it in. Uh, we'll figure that out after as well. There's lots of details here that I don't know what we're gonna do with that. But the idea is there, which is great. Thank you guys so much for this. Honestly, this is the best idea. I'm so happy we don't have to use a robot gripper. Come out like that.
mirror that, boom, make sure that that is tangent, give it a dimension. 25 sounds good. And trim that, boom. So this right here is the magnet. Where, how do I show this to you? And this is gonna press into the bottom of this ring right here. That's the plan at least right now. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. The plan is to print this piece with this side on the bed. So it's gonna print vertically this way. This ring should print like, it'll print decently without supports. It doesn't matter though, because it doesn't need to be round. And we can give it a fillet here. Oh my God. And that should help. It really shouldn't need, it shouldn't flex. It might flex a little bit because there's gonna be force pushing down on it. We'll figure that out after. Honestly, actually now that I think of it, I want this to come back as much as possible. So let's change the sketch. If I can even do it this way. Make this and this tangent. And maybe we'll just make this a straight line from here, tangent to here. Boom. And repeat that on this side. And then we'll just do this so it doesn't give us an error. Boom. Cool. We actually might even be able to bring that back even more now that I think about it because we're pushing the magnet in from the bottom and it's really just about where this cam is gonna come out of from the front. But let's, uh, let's throw a cam in there. Well, at least first we can Get rid of these terrible gripper pieces. Edit. Open subassembly. Peace to you. Don't need this gear anymore. We don't need this anymore. That felt so good. So now we just basically need file new. I'm gonna make this part no, uh, I'm gonna do it on this plane. This is gonna be our like sliding cam. And there might be a better way to do this. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions, Neptune, Antv, you guys have been coming in hot with all the ideas today. Let's find the center diameter of this magnet. This magnet's really just like, it looks like it's just a magnet jammed into this like end cap. And I don't really understand why, unless it's for like a screw, maybe that's what it's for. But we'll go with this bigger diameter, the smaller diameter here, which is 5.4. Five point four So I'm gonna make this smaller, much smaller. We're gonna make it four. Yeah, I like it. This is gonna be the part that is the cam is gonna be interacting with here. We'll make that eight, fine, works for me. Um, maybe I'll angle this just for shits. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do this. So the spring is gonna be here, 
The cam is gonna be here. That's what's gonna be constraining everything. This has gotta be, I don't know how much it's gonna be. Maybe we'll make it 10 for now and we'll figure it out after. This is gonna be here. Let's just make it 30 for now. And then we can rotate that. Rotate, revolve boss base, boom. And this is gonna be the drop pin, R-O-C-L underscore drop pin. So let's go here, insert the drop pin. I don't know how this is gonna print. It might be a little, it might break. I don't think it will. We can, we can really tune the force, which is nice. So this has got to be mated to this in the center because that's where the magnet's going to be. And so this is what I was saying, how we can pull this thing back. So let's just do that first. And it's sketch. So right now it's tangent here. We can actually pull it back like this could basically, as long as the pin is like dropped like right up here and this isn't coming down here. So let's, let's constrain it by this dimension, which is, get rid of all of this, get rid of this, bring this, No. Struggling. Okay, so this is just the, the, really the, the main dimension to constrain it is how thick we want the back to be. Yeah, it shouldn't break. You're right, it shouldn't break, but I don't know. Because if I'm, I'm printing this this way, the layer lines are gonna be like this. I don't, I don't love that. Maybe I can make this actually into a square piece. And that way I can print it this way and then the layer lines will go in the direction of travel. And it doesn't need to be a rotation. And it can still sit on a spring and it's not that nice, but it's not that elegant, but it, it will, it gets the job done. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Cause it's definitely stronger if you printed it like in this orientation, like if the base was, if this was flat to the base, I don't know if you got, if I'm making any sense. If I'm not making sense, just, just tell me. So we want the thickness, we'll make it 1.5. Boom. Now we just need to Well, NTV, thanks for stopping in and thanks for, for giving me some great ideas today, man. It's been, it's been really nice having your suggestions and just getting the brain flowing. Yeah, you're right, Neptune. I'm, I'm actually, I'm less concerned about the compression as I am <laughs> well, we might print this mechanism tonight, actually, because, yeah, it's small parts, so if it doesn't work, we can do it. But yeah, have a good night, man. It's been really nice having you here. So we're just going to cut this. I don't know how deep this needs to be. Eight mil. We'll go 8.5 just to have a little bit of extra space. Beautiful. And then I actually want this to be eight as well. 8.5. And then we have this ugly like lip here. I don't know, maybe we can just like chamfer it away. Not quite. Oh man, I don't know what to do with this ugly lip right here. 
We're gonna let the subconscious work on that. We're just gonna make a cam. File new part. The cam is gonna be really simple. It's just gonna be like this. And there's gonna be another circle here. Give us a dimension like, I don't know, eight. Boom. Give us a dimension like, I don't know, five sounds good. Make sure these are constrained horizontal and then we can make our cam line, boom. Make everything tangent. There's one thing I always forget. I, it's, I always try to do those lines like that one. It's way easier to do it like this and then just mirror it like that. Now we can trim stuff. Extrude it. Maybe we'll make it seven. I don't know. And my plan for this is just screw it directly into the servo spline. R O C L. We're gonna still call it gripper just for legacy. Call it the gripper cam. Go to the gripper assembly. Let's throw the cam in there. Amazing. Thanks, Neptune. I appreciate it. Always come in with great ideas. I love it. And listen, I, I'm open to ideas from anyone. So if you guys have any ideas for like ways I can improve projects, just let me know. That's gonna go on here, boom. And then basically the way it's gonna work, we might need to make this cam a little bit bigger. This is gonna go to this face just for now. And so now we can actually use the cam mate, which is sweet. Um, let's let's just do that because why not? Mechanical mates cam cam path is this face. Cam follower is this face. Boom. And boom. So when we do that, you can see it pushes it down. And so the servo, we're gonna be able to control like this. And when you do that, it's gonna push this down, which is gonna release the marble. So we need to make the cam a little bit bigger. Let's do it out of the assembly just so we can get a better view of it. So we need this to be like maybe 12. I knew that was gonna happen. Let's make this bigger first. Six, we'll make this 12 and we'll make this seven. And like the bigger this radius is, the more smooth the cam motion is, like the less extreme of a force. And then same with this too. But for now, this is good enough. We may have to adjust this, but let's just see here, we can adjust this shorter. So like the marble, okay, let's, let's just draw the magnet real quick, just so we have it. So I can't tell, no, it's pretty, pretty straight lines. So it's gonna look like something like this. So often when I'm doing these radiuses, I just hold it up and like try to eye it because it's hard to measure radius. Horizontal, boom. Tangent, boom. Let's get this, this is eight. This actually has like a hole in the middle like this. So this needs to not be here. This is gonna be like over here somewhere. And maybe I can give you a better view of what I'm drawing right here. Can you guys see it? 
So I'm just drawing the outside edge. I'm drawing half of it and then I'm gonna rotate it around. And there's that hole in the middle. So that's where this, that's where this gap comes from right here. So I'm gonna use this line here. This is, this is the hole right here. And when I measure that hole, I get a, Can you guys see that? It's 5.4. So that's 5.4. And then when I measure this inside hole, it is 8.9. So this is 8.9 here. The thickness of this is like really not important, but We'll just try to get it as close as possible. Maybe it looks like it's maybe two. I'll just eyeball it. Maybe it's 1.5. And then we need this outer ring, which is 24.75 if I remember correctly. Ooh, it does taper. It, it tapers as it goes down. We can make the changes in the other file as well. But what I mean by that is, if you look at it, I'm gonna pull this camera in so I can give you guys a better. So the edge of this right here, it tapers like that and like that. So the dimension changes, which is kind of annoying. 24.5 there and 24.9 there. It's really annoying because it's hard to like get that right. But we can just try. If we say 24.9 at the bottom edge, this is not vertical. And we try to give this top edge, what is it, 24.4. Why is it giving me problems right now? I said you're not vertical. We're gonna have to redraw that like this. 24.9, this is 24.5. And that kind of constrains our angle for us and then we can give it a radius here and that will finish the job. And this and this tangent. And the radius, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Looks good. We're gonna make it 2.5. Hopefully the designers were using good clean dimensions. And then what else is, oh, this is the last thing to constrain it. We're just gonna constrain it to this point, horizontal. And then we can revolve it. Boom. And that's what our magnet kind of looks like. Pretty close, close enough. Good enough for 3D printing. So the only annoying thing about that are OCL magnet is on this part, we're gonna have to try to get that angle in there. So I think the best way to do that, first of all, what's the problem here? Just fill it, Let's fill it. Insert component, magnet, if we make this and this, concentric, on this and this face, boom. So that's our magnet in there, but the problem is this, let's see if I can show it. Yeah, so we're gonna have this gap here which might be fine because we could just glue it into place. I say, fuck it, we're leaving it for now. Just going with it. Okay, so now the last thing to do to get this to work, 
couple things actually. First, I gotta find my spring collection. And we can just pick a spring from this collection right here. So I think a good spring is maybe this guy. It's big enough, doesn't have to be like very strong. And um, yeah, that's probably perfect. So the spring is gonna go between I'm probably gonna have a guide here. The inner diameter of the spring is like eight. So we got plenty of space for that. And I'm gonna redesign this piece as a square just so I can print it this way. And that will just make it stronger and slide better just because of the way the layer lines are gonna be. And then off of this, I'm gonna have a guide for that square. Hmm. And we can make this shorter. You know, I'm actually feeling lazy at this point. So we're just gonna print it as a circle and if it doesn't work, we can design it, we can fix that after. So this, I just gotta make sure that it's pushing through the hole so it can detach the marble. So 30 was actually probably a good distance. And then we gotta make sure when it comes back, it comes back all the way. And the way to fix that is this. We're actually gonna make this cam a little bit bigger even. And I wanna make this a bigger dimension so it moves a little bit more smoothly. Let's see how that looks. So now we can make this a little shorter. Beautiful. So it's gonna be holding the mark. Mar it's gonna be holding the ball bearing. The can's gonna push down like this. It's gonna release the ball bearing, and then the can comes back up. And the spring is gonna push this back up against the can. And then we can adjust this distance as well. So in order to constrain this, let me just make the change first and I can explain why. So I'm actually gonna change this dimension from here to here. So that way I can adjust this dimension with a, without adjusting the overall length of the cam, which is helpful. And then now I'm gonna put like a, a guide for the cam on this right here on this piece. So I'm gonna sketch it off of this face. We need a circle in the middle. And we're gonna use like a decent amount of clearance on that cam just because of the layer lines and stuff. So yeah, that works. I believe I made the, the cam is gonna be four. So we'll make this like 4.6. Lots of clearance. And I think it'll be okay. And then we're just gonna, I'm probably gonna cut that from here and then maybe I'll draw the, the, the difference down after that. Let's see what we get. I don't know how it's gonna look. I may even like cap this thing off. Just, yeah, actually I'm gonna cap it off for sure. Let's do that first. And the hole is gonna be 4.65. And this is just so I can clean up this, this section right here because I don't like it. And we're gonna be pushing the magnet in from the bottom anyways and we're probably gonna be gluing it to this surface as well. And yeah, two millimeters is perfectly fine. And then we can 
take this sketch, put it onto this face right here, and then we can edit that. And we'll just give it a dimension to this circle. And we'll make it two and a half is good enough. And we'll go like, there's like a certain rule when you're dealing with like cam with um, like sliding parts. I think it's three to one. So the diameter of a circle is four, three to one is 12. And that should mean it slides like decently well. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but now I need to build like a, just like a little bit underneath here. And I can actually do that in this sketch here. We'll just do it like this. We'll go to this line because whatever, why not? Trim this piece down. So now it's all one piece. And then when we go back to the assembly, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now I can adjust this to give me a little bit more space for the spring. So this is when it's at its up position. So the spring is gonna be fully extended. Where did I put my spring? So if we look at the spring here, fully extended, it is like 15, 16, but I wanna have it, when it's at its full extension, I wanna have it like a little bit compressed. So we'll go with like the distance being like 13 and a half, even 14 is fine. So the spring is gonna be compressed. So I need to make sure that when this is at its highest point, this distance is 14 or less. And the distance is 11 and a half. So now the question is, is that too small? So at its smallest, the spring can compress to 2.9. So we actually have a ton of space to work with. And when this cam is all the way down, the distance here is 6.55. So it's actually perfectly fine the way it is right now. And I like it like that. So the only other question is, should I make this piece bigger? I think I'm going to, just to have a little bit more surface area for the cam to slide on, we'll make it 12. That's pretty nice. It's a little too big maybe, just in case. We'll make it 10. Yeah, 10's good. So here's the process. We're gonna put this piece right here onto the motor, slide the spring onto the cam, slide the cam into place here. Then we're gonna put this cam onto the edge here. And I'm actually gonna space it out a little bit more. So it's like right in the middle here. So let's just do that. Uh, where's my cam? Change this mate right here to a distance mate of like two mil. No, not degrees. This to a distance mate of about two mil, 2.5 mil. Yeah, that's good enough. And then the plan is to attach this directly onto the end of a motor. So I need a motor just to get the end of the shaft size. I have a bunch of motors kicking around here. So here's the motor spline, and I'm just gonna make a hole in this right here that's gonna be like, it's gonna press fit onto here. And that way I don't have to use like a, a servo horn. Like often you'll see designs that will like have like a hole in the cam that would fit perfectly onto this horn. And that's what would move. But I realized at one point that you just don't need to do that. It works fine if you could just like press fit it right onto this and use the screw to hold it down. So that's what we're gonna do here. This is four point eight five. So I'm gonna make a hole that's like four point seven five on this. And 
Yeah. Just want to make sure I'm in the, doing it on the right side here. Open prime position. So here, 4.75, I believe it was. And we can cut a little hole in there. Where did I put my motor? Where did I put my calipers? We're gonna make it go to there. So about three mil. And then, uh, oops. Three mil, perfect. And then we need a hole for the screw. And I believe the screws are two and a half mil screws. Let's just confirm that. Here I have an M two and a half screw. And that is confirmed, it's two and a half. So we're gonna make this hole with some clearance, 2.5 plus 0.3 clearance. And now we can cut all the way through. Beautiful. Put some nice chamfers on there to clean it up. And our cam is now ready for print. Look at that, simple, elegant, clean. So let's get the rest of the parts ready for print now. Um, this guy, I just wanna put some screw holes here. And for that, I use number two screws or thread forming screws. So the hole has to be like 1.8, but I'll make it two because they always print a little small. And you can just do a thread forming screw right in there, which is so convenient. Those are the same size, equal. And we're gonna cut that. Might as well go through all. Yeah, might as well not go through all actually. We'll go to like, we'll go to offset from surface one millimeter. So we don't have an ugly screw head pointing through. And yeah, basically this is, this is all done here. I don't know why there's this gap right here. What is this? That's weird, shouldn't be there. I'm just gonna do this, delete that and grab that hole. That should fix the problem. Beautiful, so now this part is gonna print up from the bed this way. So let's throw some chamfers on the back of this just to clean it up. It won't let me select that face, will it? Dagger, we gotta go all the way around now. So we go select the loop. No, it won't let me do that either. Okay, we gotta do it the uh, manual way. Grab that, grab that, grab that. Grab this loop, this loop. Grab this and grab this. That's for the bottom. Maybe we'll give it some nice chamfers around the top here. Give those big chamfers. We can give this a big chamfer. And yeah, we'll give the top the 0.5 chamfers as well. Why not? Select loop. Grab this face, this face, this edge, I meant this edge, and this edge, boom. So this part is now ready for print as well. Sweet. I love being able to print and prototype parts. Like we're, we're on day two of this project and we're ready prototyping parts, so 
mount, uh, gripper, I don't know, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so then the last bit right here, I want to give this a fillet just to make it a little stronger. Not that big though. I actually forgot, I forgot about something important here. Let's just make sure, where did my spring go? Fuck. Does anyone see it? Is it here anywhere? Is it attached? No. Let's get another one. They're all freaking tangled together. Okay. Just wanna make sure it's just the same spring. Should be like, yeah. The inner diameter just can't be bigger than that flange that I made. 8.4. Here's the flange here. And it's 10, so it should be fine. Should be all right. I'm gonna put that back where we got it from, okay. And then I'm going to put a chamfer on this side as well. And I want it to be more than 45 degrees. I want it to be more than one. Let me get... I want it to be even more, than, better than that. More, better, something. 20, 15, maybe 10. Yeah, that works for me. And then we'll give it some nice fillets. So why not? Give it some nice fillets. Nope. And then we're gonna throw a chamfer on this edge here. 0 0.5. And here, and we're gonna make that 45 degree chamfer. 45 degree chamfer. And this part's ready for print as well. Actually, let's give it that, that end fillet as well. Beautiful. STL, what happened to my other piece? Selected all, all bodies, yeah. I thought I'd save this piece. Ah, uh, saved as, so annoying. Whenever you do that, you gotta go back and save it as what it was before, okay. Now we can export it as an STL. Do it properly this time, boom. Yes, selected bodies, okay. Boom, and then, don't know if I saved my cam as an STL, did I? Gripper cam, yes. Yes. And now we can throw them in the slicer and like in like less than an hour, we're gonna be able to, I think less than, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half it'll take. We'll be able to test this, these parts out and see how they look. And if they're not good, iterate and recreate. So we'll see how that prints. I'm gonna print it with a little bit more infill than normal. Normally I print it 20, I'll print it at 50, just so this pin's stronger. But boom, look at that, less than an hour, we're gonna be able to test these parts out. And I think that's where we're gonna call it because this has been an epic stream because you guys have really helped me dial in this gripper design and we haven't actually even looked at it in, let's just take a quick look at it in the assembly, in the final assembly and just see it, it's just so much cleaner. If we, um, I don't know what the problem is. We take this mate right here and flip it. Boom. It's just so much cleaner. Like this is just gonna come in like this. Grab the marble, come up, drop it. Grab the next marble, drop it. So clean, so simple, so elegant. The best kind of solution. So yeah, thank you guys so much for following along. Thanks for sticking around. Thank you for giving me ideas. 
especially Neptune and Antv. You guys are have been a huge help. And hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next stream. I don't think I'm going to be streaming tomorrow because it's Friday. And that's the only reason I have. But if I do, you'll see it. All right, guys. Love you all. Peace.